Turkane sweat house. A large amount of fuel was required to get the sweat house thoroughly heated. We've seen the sweat house, I think. A big turf or wood fire was lit. When the interior was very hot, the fire was drawn out, the floor swept, and green rushes or bracken strewn thickly over it. Sometimes water would be thrown on the floor to create steam. The patients undressed and crawled in. The entrance was closed up. The air hole in the roof was covered and the inmates were left to sweat it out in the dark. The air hole could be un to adjust the temperature if necessary. Patients who were infirm or already weak often fainted from the heat and had to be pulled out. After an appropriate time, about half an hour, the entrance was unblocked. Sweat houses were not used exclusively for curing diseases, of course we know that. On Rathlin Island, for instance, around the time of the Lammas Fair at Ballycastle, the Knockhams sweat house was well patronised by young women anxious to cleanse their pores after burning seaweed to make kelp, an important component in linen bleaching. The smoke from the kelp kilns did nothing for a girl's complexion. End of story. And this wee pool here. That's the plunge pool. The plunge pool. The clients could also use the plunge pool uh, to cool off. They would come out of the heat and get into the plunge pool. So we're going to head up the steps there. Uh -huh. Look for a little geocache. Uh -huh.